In this video, we're going to take a look at a new way to represent complex numbers, which is called the modulus argument form. We should already be familiar with this form of a complex number, which is called the Cartesian form, which is the x plus yi form. So this would be the real path and this would be the imaginary path. But to find the modulus argument form, we first need to briefly look at something called the Argand diagram, because we're going to be using the sketch. So an Argand diagram is a way to represent a complex number in two dimensions. And instead of like your x-axis and your y-axis, we call it the real axis and the imaginary axis. So say for example, if we said z1 was 3 plus 2i, that would mean move 3 across on the real axis, move 2 up on the imaginary axis. So z1 would be there. If I had z2, which was 2i, that means we don't move anywhere on the real axis and we just move up 2 on the imaginary axis, so z2 would be there. Can't forget z3, which was 1 minus 3i. We'd move 1 across on the real axis, and then 3 down on the imaginary axis. Okay, so with this in mind, we can represent complex numbers in two dimensions. We're going to use this to think about a new form, which is called the modulus argument form. Okay, so if I've got a general complex number, which I'm just going to call x plus yi, obviously that means move x across this way. So this distance here would be x plus yi, so it would move up y in the imaginary direction. But there's a new way of us thinking about how to get to this number, and this will be new for most of us watching this video. You will never have thought about this before. Like Whenever you think about two dimensions, you always describe it as how far to go one way and how far to go the other way. How far do we move across x? How far do we move up y? A new way to represent this point here is to think about what's this distance, which I'm going to call r. So how far are we away from the origin? Let's call that r. But that wouldn't be enough information, would it? If I just told you the distance, say for example, if I said r is equal to 4, you would know that your complex number was 4 away from the origin. Maybe pause and think about what sort of shape that would look like, because that's going to come in a later video. So all complex numbers that are a distance of 4 away, you could be that one, which was 4 away there. It could be this one, which was 4i, which is 4 away there. But there's actually an infinite number of possible points that are a distance of 4 away. And you'd end up with a circle. So if I told you the distance was 4, you'd be any, any point somewhere along about this circle here. So clearly we need a little bit more information. Okay, so when we say modulus argument form, the modulus, which we write as z, is the distance. We also need to find the argument. Okay, so to define where this, this individual point is, the distance is one thing, but the argument is the angle. It's, so if I give you both of those pieces of information, which angle we turn to and which distance it takes us to this specific point here. Now when we say argument as an angle, it takes a bit of getting used to when we first see this, but the angle has got to be measured from this positive real axis, okay? And we measure it anti-clockwise from the positive real axis. So if I wanted to figure out what R was and what theta was, maybe pause and think about how we could do that. So if you notice that actually all we're working with here is it's just a right angle triangle. We can do this using GCSE techniques. If I know what the x value is and I know what the y value is, I can figure out what the r value is, the distance, it's just Pythagoras. And if I know the x value and I know the y value, I can figure out the angle because I can just use Sokotoa. Maybe tan, if you know the opposite and the adjacent, you'd be able to work out theta by using tan. But if you also know what the hypotenuse is, you could use sine or you could use cos as well. Okay? 
So by Pythagoras, we know that x squared plus y squared must equal r squared. And we know that tan t of that is equal to opposite of adjacent, which is y over x. Let's see how we can figure out what y is then. If we imagine we knew what r and theta were, how could we figure out what y was? So if I draw a little triangle here, again, when we do some actual examples in a second, we'll know what these values are. But for now, let's just do it in a general form. So if I've got a right angle triangle, this angle is what I'm calling theta. Y would be the opposite side and R would be the hypotenuse. So we could say therefore sine theta must equal opposite over hypotenuse. So that gives us a really useful relationship for Y. We would know that Y would equal R sine theta. And this is going to be really useful to remember. Because this is going to be a quick way to swap between the R and the theta world and the Y world. Okay. Possibly pause and try and figure out what X would equal then. Can we get a similar expression for X? So again, if we think about the right angle triangle, if this is theta and this is R, X is the adjacent side, isn't it? So we could say that cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So R cos theta is equal to X. So there might be quite a bit going on right now because we're bringing together Pythagoras, Sokotoa, diagrams, complex numbers, angles, distances. So just to review basically what we said there, if we've got a complex number, we can write it in the Cartesian form. We can draw that on a diagram. So X is how far we move that way. Y is how far we move in the imaginary direction. But as well as thinking about it as an X and a Y coordinate, we can represent it in this modulus argument form. So instead of thinking about distances that way and distances this way, we can define this point by the distance that we move from the origin and the angle that we turn through. And that leads us to a new way to represent complex numbers, which is going to be really useful for these questions. OK, so the modulus argument form of a complex number, we could say z is equal to x plus yi, but we know x is r cos theta. We know y is r sine theta. So we can say z is equal to r cos theta plus i sine theta. Where r represents the magnitude of the complex number. It's called the modulus. And theta represents the argument. Just be careful with this, it must be in radians. So you want to highlight that. Okay. If you haven't seen radians before, just watch the other video on radians. Okay. So what we're going to aim to do, now that we know about this new form of a complex number, we're going to swap some complex numbers from this Cartesian form into this modulus argument form. So if, what's the distance? What's the angle? And that's what we're going to do next. OK, so the first example says, sketch the following complex numbers, find their modulus and argument. 
If it doesn't say to sketch and you think about modulus and argument, you definitely do want to draw a sketch. Okay, so just highlight this. Always sketch these for modulus and argument form. It's going to be really useful. Okay, so with the first one, we've got 4i, which is 4 on the imaginary axis, isn't it? So we don't actually need to use Pythagoras for this one, although I've said x squared plus y squared equals r squared. If you think about it, the distance, 4i is clearly a distance of 4 away. So the magnitude of the complex number. The note, don't get lost in the notation here. They use two, two ways to represent this. So if we write magnitude of z, we mean the modulus of z. But we can also call it r on this topic. So get used to using both versions. It just represents the distance. So the distance would equal 4. The argument. Now this is where we've got to be really careful. This is where the diagram is very important. right? So the argument is measured from the positive real axis. So we turn this way, and that's what our theta is. Okay. So if you think about this, we don't need to use socket tower. You can just look at that and say, well, that's a 90 degree angle, isn't it? So theta is equal to. Now be careful here. Don't use 90 degrees. We have to know what that is in radians. So it's pi over two. If there's two pi all the way around, 180 degrees is pi. So 90 degrees. Is pi over two, okay? So if, sketch the following complex numbers. I know I've, I've tried, if you're asked to sketch something in the exam, don't like draw all over your sketch. So the actual sketch should just look like. You know, just make it clear that that distance there is four. But just so we can work through these together. I am going to draw on these diagrams as well. So the distance is for the angle theta. And if you want to write it in, in modulus argument form, so see this, this form is really important to get used to. We could say therefore, 4i is exactly the same as r cos theta plus i sine theta. So if we write that as r, which is 4 cos theta, which is cos of pi over 2, plus i sine theta, which is sine of pi over 2. And you will see that this is the same, because we end up with cos of pi over 2, which is the same as cos of 90. Use your calculator, make sure you calculate this in radians, if you're not sure. But cos of pi over 2 is 0. And sine of pi over 2, which is the same as sine of 90, is 1. Mm. So basically, you can use this as a check to make sure you've got the right distance and the right angle because if you sub it into this it should go back to the same form of the complex number. Okay next one z equals minus 2 plus 2i. Very important that we sketch this as I said. So minus 2 means we've moved negative 2 in the in the real direction, plus 2i means that we're moving plus 2 in the imaginary direction. So what we're aiming to figure out is what's this distance? So the r value would be this distance here. That's what we'd call r. And please be careful, the angle, which is where people get a little bit stuck on at first, the argument has got to be measured this way. Okay, so quite often people would go wrong with the angle because they wouldn't draw it and they'd just think about these two values. But you should think about the sketch because the argument is going to be measured from the positive real axis. And it's clearly going to be an obtuse angle that we're going to end up with, isn't it? Okay, so hopefully with a bit of practice you can do these quite quickly because you can see the symmetry. Like if you look at this triangle that we've got here, 
because it's minus two, which is which is two that way, and plus two, we end up with a special type of triangle. Like if we just focus on this triangle here, because that's all we really cared about. It's clearly an isosceles triangle, isn't it? It's an isosceles triangle, and if that angle's ninety, that angle there would be forty-five. But let's try and do that in radians. To get used to radians, it'd be pi over 4. That one's pi over 2. And that one's pi over 4. Because we know the angles in a triangle add up to 180. So in radians, we know they add up to pi. So pi over 4, pi over 4, pi over 2. So you could, with it, by inspection, you could just look at that and say, all right, with practice, that angle there is pi over 4. So then you can see there for the argument. If you think about it, if we've got pi over 4 there, that bit there must be 3 pi over 4. Because we know the angles on a line add up to 180 or add up to pi. It's also quite visual as well, isn't it? You can see that's a quarter, another quarter, another quarter, another quarter. So we've got three quarters, and that's one quarter. So the arguments have said, we could say it's 3 pi over 4. Okay? If you can't spot that, it's fine. It takes a bit of practice. Sort of a foolproof way to do it is to think, well, from the triangle, if we just use these two distances, you can say tan theta. Um, I'm going to call it something else, tan of alpha, if I just call that angle there alpha. So tan of alpha is opposite over adjacent. So alpha would equal tan inverse of 1. And if you do tan inverse of 1, you get pi over 4. So you can see that angle there is pi over 4. So therefore, the argument is pi minus pi over 4, which is 3 pi over 4. The argument's not the awkward bit. The, um, the distance is, is always straightforward. So once you've got the argument, you could normally you'd work out the distance first. So r would just equal, if that's 2 and that's 2, it would be the square root of 2 squared plus 2 squared. So we can always just use Pythagoras for the distance. So that would be root 8, which we could write as 2 root 2. Okay, so we've got our modulus. We've got our argument. And again, if you want to, I'm not going to go through it, but if you want to, you can sub it back into this. So if you do 2 root 2, cos 3 pi over 4 plus i sine 3 pi over 4, if you times that out, it should take you back to the original complex number to check that you've got it right. Okay, thanks guys.